so welcome to the first video of induction motor um, me nilox and robul bijoy will cover this section i will be there for most of the parts and bijoy will be there for few parts also and as like as like machines induction motor also consists of physics part and engineering part it's more of an engineering problem than physics problem you're, nevertheless we're going to see the physics part first and then we'll move to the engineering part so the first point of interest is going to be uh, how a rotating loop behaves in a stationary magnetic field we, and we will come up with the result that eventually an emf is going to be induced in the rotating loop so how is that going to happen we are going to see in detail now okay uh, first of all we have to understand that uh, suppose before going to loop we will have to understand how a moving where behaves in a stationary magnetic field so suppose this is a moving wire and there are charges in here and its its velocity is in this direction and the magnetic field the stationary magnetic field is pointing into the phase which i will denote by this vector so as always if we use our right our rules to find out what will be what will be the forces on these charges in the surface we see the magnetic force is denoted by q v cross b right so force will be in the direction of v cross b and you see if you use your right hand v cross b will point in the upward direction so positive charges will go on the up upward surface and lower lower surface will be accommodated by ne negative charges so this will be the magnetic force but you see as positive charges start climbing up and up it will it will prevent for further and positive charges to come because positive and positive repel right so you see there will be an electric field opposing the further movement of these charges and somehow it will happen that electric force and magnetic force will equal equal up and there will be an equilibrium electric field so let that electric force be q times my equilibrium electric field right so if we know that in equilibrium they will be equal so ultimately we can derive onto the equation of how e is going to be and you see e is equals to v cross b if we know electric field we can find out the voltage and if obviously if there is electric field there is a potential difference and voltage from the theory of electricity magnetism is simply the integral of e dot dl so that means v cross b dot dl and if we assume that this cross product is really constant over the whole surface then we can easily say this is equals to v cross b dot l where l points l is a vector that points in the direction of velocity and and uh, l is a vector that points in the direction of electric field yeah this this is what i mean and uh, this is the induced emf equation all right so we are going to use this equation to derive a much complicated one right so this is the loop and this is the simplest ac machine meaning a meaning a, a simple stationary bar magnet and a loop rotating okay and here the top portion is only shown this portion top view is only shown so this will be a first you go from a to b then you go from b to c and then you go from c to d all right and let's suppose that at some particular moment is rotating in this counterclockwise direction so the velocity vector instantaneously is going to point there and here in these two parts right so let's use uh, this formula to find induced emf at every portion okay uh, now first of all in this portion ab portion like here the ab portion what is going to happen you see that the velocity vector is going to be in this direction and the b vector is in this direction right so if we you use your right hand then v cross b is going to point downward so there will be an induced emf in the downward direction meaning it will be at higher higher potential so if you use that then e of a b is going to be from our last derived formula v cross b 
dot L and we see that V cross B it will be parallel to L this L so it will turn out that this is equals to um, V cross B um, is equals to magnitude of this cross product dot L times cosine 0 which is simply 1 and what is V cross B's magnitude it will be simply VB sin theta of AB well theta is the angle between the velocity and magnetic field vector if we try to find out uh, the in this emf here that means in the b to c portion you see the cross product will still be uh, in the downward direction and it will be orthogonal right the cross product is in the z direction and it is in the x y plane right so there will be no induced emf and for the same reason the induced emf in this top portion will also be zero Right, but there will be induced EMF from here to here on and let us see how the polarity and what's the magnitude okay uh, you see um, here the velocity vector is in this direction in like this and the magnetic field is like this so if you go from V to B then you have to curl your hand like this right V to B and the thumb will uh, give the cross product direction it you need to be uh, in the upward direction so you'll get an emf from the hair onto hair meaning the lower surface right now is going to be at higher potential so you see that you get e cd is going to be p cross b dot l and again we see that l vector and the cross product is simply in the same direction so you can say v cross b magnitude dot l and the magnitude of v cross b would be vb sin theta cd now simply well theta cd will be the angle here in the in this portion about of the velocity vector and the magnetic field times l so you see in this portion it was more positive than here and here it is more positive than the upward portion so overall it is more positive than here and you will get a overall emf induced voltage difference from here to here portion which will be just the sum of these two so this is called total emf total emf will be vbl sin theta ab plus vbl sin theta cd right now try to understand something that this thing this loop is a body right so if it is rotating then the velocity vector in here would be pointing like this and it here will be pointing like this since it is a body the velocity vectors will have to be anti-parallel right it has to be anti-parallel so if a velocity vector on one portion is like this the velocity vector other portion will have to be like this and according to our picture b vector is here so we can find out some relation between theta a b and theta c d and you can say theta a b is equals to 180 degree minus theta c d well uh, if we go for more details then you can see we have to substitute in this total emf equation so e total will be v b L sine 180 degree minus theta CD plus VBL sine theta CD sine of 180 minus theta is simply sine theta so that gives me 2 VBL sine theta CD and denoting this theta CD by simply theta where theta means the angle between the relative velocity and the B vector okay so it will be simply 2 VBL sine theta now V is really a linear quantity, we don't want that, nobody wants that in, in a rotational problem, right? So we are going to replace V by omega R. Now remember, in this shorter problem, when we replace V by omega R, R is simply the distance from the center of mass or pivot to the corner point, the, to the body that is rotating, right? And if this is rotating, then the pivot will be on here. If this rectangular body is rotating the pivot is going to be here and this body is rotating so if we call V V will be simply this R pivot to body distance times Omega right the angular angular velocity so twice Omega R 
bl sin theta now try to understand something twice r will be this the width of this rectangular loop and twice r times l will be width into height which will produce the area of this rectangular loop so we get a b omega sin theta now we know phi is simply equals to a b cosine theta so phi max is a b the maximum flux is obviously going to be the area times the times the b vector so we get e total is equals to phi max omega sine theta and a little more generification is that if you have n terms then it's going to be n phi m omega sine theta right and uh, and um, if we want to see it in our more general form the way we see it in electrical engineering then we have to replace theta by omega t because that's what theta is the velocity times the time so it will be n phi m omega sine of omega t and uh, that's that's it that's how uh, that's the, the basic way we can produce a sinusoidal voltage now you may think that we will study in the induction motor why we need to know about how voltage is induced. Well the thing is that in induction motor there is no DC source supplying current like in synchronous motor. So there will be a generator effect hidden in induction motor also which we will have to study. So that's all for this section.